Hi, I'm Jonathan Weinberg, and uh, welcome back. Um, today I'm excited to talk about a relatively new product from Fountain Pen Revolution, which is a 14K gold nib, Ultraflex nib. So they have, for a while, they've had gold nibs with their regular flex, and of course, they I've reviewed and I love their metal ultra flex but i wanted to see what would it be like to use a gold version of that um of their flex ultra flex and try that out um it's it's pricey um if you get the six inch version i think it's 165 dollars the 5.5 inch version now lists for 155 dollars but they often have sales and they had a sale I think it was 20% off of a pen and the nib. I was able to get um, a um, Himalaya version one ebonite pen, which is what you see here, with the Ultra Flex 14 karat gold nib for around $140, which is extremely reasonable for a um, 14 karat nib uh, pen. Um, in comparison, uh, if one was to get an Ultra Flex or Flex Pen by Pilot, the um, Falcon usually lists around $180. You could, you know, if you get it from Japan, if you get some of the pop, uh, Pilot pens, they are under $200. The um, 273, which, excuse me, the 743, which I strongly recommend, is um, uh, always usually around two hundred dollars, so that's a it's a very good price, and um, I wanted to try and see if it if it's good. I really like Fountain Pen Revolution's Metal Ultra Flex. I wanted to see is this going to be worth it. Um, I I um, played with it for quite a while. I've been using it for several weeks because I find particularly with something like this that you really need to. Um, you know, feel out the pen and really get a sense of how it, it works. And I, um, spoiler alert, I think it works really, really well for drawing. Um, it, it wouldn't be my favorite pen for writing with, um, but I don't do calligraphy. So that's, a, that's another thing here that I should say. Um, it has, it's, it writes very fine. And you'll see, and I think it would be good for doing kind of Spencerian writing, but um, I I found it when I was just writing with it to be a little bit scratchy, but I was very surprised that then when I started to draw with it that it was it was just fantastic. The range of line that I was able to get with it was really to me really impressive, and I was also very impressed by the way. Um, the ebonite feed kept up with the pen. Um, in, in some ways, when I just was doing little tests, it didn't do as well. But when I actually was drawing with it, it really, really did very, very well. Um, the pen itself, as you can see, is uh, rather modest looking. Um, it comes in many different versions. I had some of the earlier Himalayan version pens in acrylic. And I've decided I wanted, to, I love ebonite, and I thought I would try, this is the first time I've had one of the, their ebonite pens. Their pens are made in India, and supposedly this is actually handmade. Um, truth in advertising, the first version of this pen that they sent me, I thought that the cap uh, was a bit rough here. Um, and I called up Kevin, or emailed him, and he sent me a new version that's a little better. It, it's an inexpensive pen, I would say. Um, you know, it, it, if you just buy the pen, they're often around $30 with, with a regular metal nib. Um, it depends, again, whether it's on sale. Sometimes they have two-for-one sales. It's not a fabulously expensive pen. Um, and it's, it, it's very lightweight. Um, it feels almost like a small pen, but I was actually surprised to see that it compares in size very closely to a safari and it's it's more than five inches long um, and when it's posted it's 5.9 inches long so it's not it's not a terribly small pen but it's a very 
light pen. And I and as I say, I don't I'm not wild about the way in which it's finished in terms of the band and the sharpness of the pen in terms of how it comes together. Um, it's perfectly nice looking, but there's something a little bit crude about it, I would say. It's not refined, I think, um, as one's used to with bigger company pens, I would say. One thing that's not great about this pen is the converter. Instead of turning, being one of the turn kinds, it's sort of like a plunger. And I find that it has a tendency to sort of stick. It, it works fine in terms of getting ink to the nib, but it's a little awkward and a little inexpensive. I would have rather a more standard kind of Schmidt converter for the pen. The pen posts very, very securely, which I always like. And because it's so light, it feels very good in the hand when you write with it or draw with it. But it really isn't about the pen body so much, which is perfectly comfortable to write with. You know, it's a very simple pen, um, but it's the nib. How does the nib perform? And um, as I'm going to show, I think it performs very, very well. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a, a very uh, elaborate drawing that I did to sort of test it out kind of a fantasy drawing of, uh, of a big, huge tree. So here is this drawing in my um, latest fountain pen sketchbook. And what I was trying to do with this is to try to tr show all the different varieties of line that I could get, you know, to do cross hatching. Um, you can see here, very fine lines here, um, also very fast lines. And I think you can see, I hope you can see that there's really no skipping. And I also wanted to see if could I get like thicker outlines and these marks here where I'm doing cross lines. And here's a much less dense, freer drawing of kind of woods. With very little pressure and getting a very fine line. Very good for cross hatching. But then, if I want to do you know, I want to get this kind of rebark effect. thicker line. And the pen really keeps up. Now, it has an ebonite feed. You see that it is really quite wet, but the feed keeps up. Here is the steel version, so this is much cheaper. You can now, they're now selling this nib for around $18 with the feed. And I think it's, you know, well over $100 more for the gold nib. But I think you can see immediately that it is not nearly as fine. It really is a huge, it's really a huge difference um, in terms of the subtlety that I'm able to get with the gold nib here. And I have to say that in fountain pen land, <laughs> um, you know, gold is the standard thing that everybody wants and it's very, very expensive, but so many people have had the experience of getting a gold nib and thinking, well, you know, how is this any better? You know, it's not really that much smoother. Or if it's smoother, it's only a little bit smoother. But here, really, 
is to my feel a significant difference in terms of the subtlety that you're able to get with the change to the old nib. Now, would that matter to a lot of people? Maybe not, you know? It depends on how much you work with a fine, a fine line. So now I'm using it much thicker. Now, it's not giving you a line that is super fat. Um, it's really going, I would say, between a broad and an extra fine. That's what we're getting, a kind of range. That's the range. And also, you don't, you know, with a flex nib, even vintage flex, you have to be careful. You don't want to spring the, the uh, nib and wreck it, right? I keep realizing that I'm going off the page here. See, so if I go back, and my tendency is to sort of jump around, I have to be careful. Oh, oh, here I am going off the page again. But I don't um, smudge it. Anyway, it's terrific. And, and you know, I'm complaining about the, the pen a bit, you know, that it's kind of sharp here. Um, but it's very comfortable. Ebonite, I love ebonite as a material, and it really is nice in the hand. Um, so that, that is terrific. I mean, it's a very comfortable pen. It's very light. So, and it, you know, you, you don't have to go with this pen. You could try out one of their more expensive pens, uh, maybe a heavier pen, if that's what, where you want to go with it. I just love it. <laughs> so, um, highly recommended. I will do uh, a writing sample just to sort of show you how that works. Okay, folks. Fountain Pen Revolution. Uh, it is 14K Ultra Flex Extra Fine, and I'm using uh, Waterman Intense Black, which is kind of the favorite ink for people who use vintage pens, because it's supposed to be very easy on pens. Um, it's a very safe, it's a safe choice. Um, and so wait, so here, here's no pressure at all. And then a little more pressure. Really thick. Starting to skip a little bit. Here we go. See, that's pretty fast. It's pretty impressive. Okay. Here it's no pressure at all. Very fine. Look at how fine that line is. Really reminds me, this line, it reminds me of Platinum 3776 Ultra Ultra Fine. It's very, very fine. And then a bit thicker. And you can see it begins to railroad a little bit. 
go down on the strokes. But if I, if I go slow, not so much. And when I'm just drawing, it performs really well. It is very wet. And it does reverse right. Oh, here. There's a bit of quick brown fox jumps over lazy dog. Now you notice that I'm getting quite a lot of variety in the line when I write. So that's nice. You know, and I'm not putting much effort into it. I mean, they're much, um, not, you know, consciously trying to get variety. Well, let's see if I can... Terrible calligrapher. Ugh. So I think you can see that if you do do calligraphy, you could probably have a lot of fun with this pen. Now, how does it compare to the metal version? Okay, well, how does it compare to the metal version? Let's see. Well, metal version does a very good job. But I would say that it's not as bouncy, it doesn't respond as well. And you can see that it's not anywhere, well, it's not as fine. So. This is the steel version. I keep saying metal, but what I really mean is steel, since gold is a metal. And it's a great variety, but it isn't as subtle. And here is the gold version. And you can see you're getting a much finer line. And it's not just the fineness of the line, but truly the flexibility of the nib and the way that it bounces back after you go from thin to thick or thick to thin. It just responds faster and more subtly than the steel nib does. But I have to say that the steel Flex nib is really quite wonderful for the price. Here again, the gold really is bouncing, really doing the kind of flexing that I associate with vintage flex nibs. And it's really a pleasure to draw with it because it has that bouncy quality. So I strongly recommend it. As always, if you enjoy this channel and this is helpful, please do subscribe.